Welcome back to The Price of Business. I am your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business. We have a champion here in our studio. He is a America's retail champion, according to the National Retail Federation, and uh, that is the world's largest retail trade association. And Rex Solomon of Houston Jewelry is our uh, champion that we're going to be talking to today. And welcome to the program. How are you, sir? Very good. How are you? Good. Tell us a little bit about uh, Houston Jewelry. We are a multi-generational family business that has been, our roots in Houston go back to the 1860s. And uh, 1860s, wow. So uh, you do guys have some, you, you definitely have some legs. You, ha- you had plenty of opportunity to work out how to be champions. Uh, a number of times to try different methods, yes. Where are you uh, qu- uh, located? Where are your, uh, We're on lo- Westheimer, close to Gessner. Last time we're close to guess. Okay, very good. Talk a little bit about uh, what's going on in your uh, business today, and 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 how do you get that kind of distinction uh, today? What what criteria was involved in choosing uh, America's retail champion? I'm not exactly privy to exactly what they'd used to choose. However, um, over the years we've tried a number of different uh, innovative techniques in in changing the business model um, and. We've taken the forefront in um, getting involved in trying to um, change the regulatory environment, both on the local level, um, the state level, and on the federal level. Got it. And so uh, I can see, in other words, you're you're involved in trying to both help consumers and at the same time uh, maintain a uh, robust industry. Yes, because I know there's a lot of fly-by-nights who call themselves jewelry jewelry stores, and I imagine that's obviously a big concern for, especially for a company that has been around for 150 years. Yeah, that is uh, that is one issue. One of the um, the big trends the past um, five ten years was the is still the you know, sell your gold um, operations, and we um, took the lead in helping working with the city to craft one of the best uh, reporting and regulation. Um, systems in the country so that material which is being offered for sale is easily tracked and um, can be recovered if it's been stolen. Right. And while that wasn't popular with um, um, many other people in the industry, it is... the pawn shop variety. The pawn shops actually uh, have a very robust reporting system. Uh-huh. It was the unregulated shops which were popping up on every... Uh, street corner. And uh, at the time, there was a, an antiquated uh, uh, paper reporting system, which pretty much meant that it was n- if something was stolen, it was never going to be found. Mm-hmm. Now, um, it's a instantaneous um, electronic reporting, um, which is instantly searchable um, by police through uh, something very similar to a Google search um, with capturing um, the the image of the person who sold it as well as their their thumbprint and the city of Houston, um, to its credit, has the the f- strongest uh, regulations in the state in that regard, mm. and actually has a precious metals unit of the um, Houston Police Department, who are based very close to here, and they specialize in these types of crimes. Yeah, that's interesting. So, um, what is the what w- what would you say is the state of your industry today, the jewelry industry today? Uh, the jewelry industry um, in the summer it's very slow. We are a um, event driven industry um, for at least the past hundred years where the the critical part of the season yeah the the year is the Christmas um, season with um, and that's uh, typical with a lot of retail, but that is the major season during this time of year. Um, we have people getting engaged all the time. Uh, there are some um, larger economic uh, forces at play in the industry right now. Precious metals have taken a uh, a turn downward, which means that the product is going to be um, less expensive in this coming holiday season if these trends continue, as the dollar has strengthened, which is defying all logic, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, except the, the if, you China, study, if you study monetary policy at all, it's shocking to see where the dollar is. Uh, it, but uh, it is very shocking. Yeah. Uh, but even more shocking was the um, collapse of the Chinese stock market and the collapse of the Chinese economy, 
which in, then makes the dollar stronger for some reason, um, unless they want their dollars back, uh, which would be a different issue altogether. Um, so those larger um, forces are at play as well as locally. Um, it remains to be seen what uh, $49, $50 a barrel oil does to the local economy. Yes, yes. They are talking about it finally possibly coming up a little bit near the end of the year, but I don't know why that would be happening. Uh, I, everything I'm seeing trending-wise would have it keep on going uh, south, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, it's funny about the whole Chinese deal because, you know, it seems like almost immediately after they announced they were going to be the world's currency... <laughs> <laughs> yep. Their stock market collapsed, and uh, their economy seems to be collapsing around it. It's, it's too much growth too fast, I think. That is, uh, there was an interesting article in the UK Telegraph about a week ago uh, where an economist um, analyzed uh, the current Chinese market and said it has eerily, eerily similar to the U.S. market in October of 1929. Uh, that just there was irrational price increases, et cetera. And um, unfortunately, as the, one of the largest world's economy, if that market does um, take a big hit, it's going to affect the world's economy in one way or another. Um, who knows how, but it's going to. Yeah, nothing happens anymore in a vacuum. No, it doesn't. You know, we're also interconnected uh, economically. It's just very difficult uh you know, to uh, to uh, really uh, respond or even know how to respond. So, you know, b- with this recognition, again, we want to, you know, recognize that America's retail champions. What what are some things that you want to bring to the listener out there as far as uh, useful information, helpful information, when it helps them to be the best consumer they can be when it comes to, to precious metals and jewelry? Oh, well, um, reputation is, is everything. Um, you... Do your due diligence on whoever you choose to to shop with. Um, check the Better Business Bureau. Um, see what the reputation is. Check the civil court. See if they've ever been sued. You know. See how long they've been in business. See what the reputation is. Um, there are a number of very fine um, businesses in the the listening area, um, and there are others who are questionable. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. That's really a good adage, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> Rick Solomon's been our guest. He's with Houston Jewelry. That is, uh, you can learn more about them at HoustonJewelry.com. Thanks for being with us. Sure. And congratulations on Thank your you. uh, award. All right, when we come back, much more for you. I do want to remind you, best content here shows up over there at USDailyReview.com. And this is The Price of Business. <laughs> 